Okay, Psych 250, let's continue with Chapter 9, Eating Disorders. We talked about the, the jogger, the case study of the jogger. Um, one of the things that we know when you have an eating disorder like anorexia nervosa, there are other compounding factors like depression, anxiety, etc. And this complicates the issue. It's not just, okay, we take care of the eating issue and everything else goes away. There is a biochemical change in people who are suffering from this due to lack of nutrition. And there's other compounding issues. Perhaps uh, they come from uh, a very perfectionistic type of environment. A lot of demands placed on them. With great power comes great responsibility, and some people can't handle that responsibility. Some people feel totally out of control. So what can we control? We can control what we drink. We can cons control what we eat, whether it's mass quantities, or whether it's nothing. So I have bulimia nervosa and there's some ways you can tell because you have your suspicions for example your mother loves it when i come over to eat at your house because not only do i eat a plate of her yummy food i ask for seconds sometimes thirds <clears throat> your dog doesn't like me because i don't share but you notice right after i consume mass quantities i make a beeline for the bathroom I'm there for quite some time. You also notice that my cheeks are really poofy. You notice that the enamel on my teeth is all gone. You have just your suspicions. And I'm suffering from bulimia nervosa. <clears throat> I have the same kind of body distortions or similar body distortions as my friend who has anorexia nervosa. Some people think that it's part of the same spectrum. It's all about control. So what do I do when I get home? I get my favorite ice cream. What's yours? I get my favorite bag of snacks. What's yours? I get my favorite two liter bottle of my favorite beverage. What's yours? And I consume them all in one sitting. A gallon of ice cream, giant bag of whatever, big bottle of whatever. And of course, afterwards, I feel horrible. I just consume mass quantities. It's almost like somebody said, if you eat this within 30 minutes, you win the prize. <coughs> My body feels horrible. I feel horrible because maybe you wanted some of that. So I have to get rid of it. So I'll stick my fingers in my mouth and force myself to vomit. I'll take laxatives. I'll do anything to hide the evidence. Where an anorexic might wear baggy clothes to hide how thin they are, sometimes they do the opposite, show off their bodies. Where an anorexic might look into the mirror and see this giant person when everybody else sees a skeletal figure. I have similar issues like that. I don't necessarily want to gain weight, but here I am consuming mass quantities, and it leads to this vicious cycle, right? I don't want to gain weight, but then I consume too much, and I feel really guilty, and i got to get rid of it, and I'm destroying my body in the meantime. Let's be honest. We eat to cope. That's why I have to be careful if I'm going to see a really scary movie or suspenseful movie or a thriller or an action-packed movie. If I go to the theater and get a bag of popcorn, and they say for 50 cents more, you can get this giant one that you can feed half the, plus a refill for free, uh, which you can feed half the theater. I might consume that entire thing while watching a movie because I'm so caught up in the movie, I'm not even paying attention. And afterwards, I feel sick, right? Because I ate way too much stuff. But I got to get my second refill for sure since it cost $20. So 
people don't like me, people who have been mean to me, people who have abused me. So what do I do? I sometimes can make a shell around me. And the shell is my food. It's my my protective field, right? It's my shield for Captain America. It's food. And if I turn into this big ginormous blob, then maybe people will leave me alone. Maybe all the insults, maybe all the abuse won't happen anymore because it'll just bounce off me. I know it sounds kind of far-fetched, but psychologically it kind of makes some sense. <clears throat> now, a related disorder is called binge eating disorder. And some of us can really relate to this because it's not so full-blown out uh, bulimia nervosa, but there are that is that there is that binge aspect to it. Again, not as extreme, but certainly periodic, that we've recently formulated a new disorder called binging disorder. Again, more women than men, although men are starting to make some progress, probably because they're going for help and getting more identified. Certainly we've seen eating disorders in certain professions where weight is absolutely important, whether it's wrestling or boxing or uh, racehorsing, things of that nature. Binging disorder is usually tied to folks who um, are struggling with weight. I know I struggled with weight for many, many, many years. I used to get really embarrassed when my mom would uh, ask where the husky section was at Sears department store. So we'd go shopping for elementary school clothes. Very embarrassing. It's pretty early on when we're really concerned, and I think today's society is even more concerned because you have more and more people judging you through social media. It's how you look, right? This placement that you have to have a certain body style, and you have to look a certain way, and you have to show off your body. I think in some ways in California, it's even worse than other states because we have a lot of warm climate, and so people are more apt to have their body exposed, so to speak, to deal with the elements. And of course, we have that whole Hollywood glamour thing here. And so there's more expectation that you have to have that certain look. <clears throat> you gotta get, be careful of the patterns we get into when it comes to supporting our eating disorders. We fall into certain patterns. And so I have to be really careful. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I make is going to the grocery store while hungry because you tend to overbuy. That's why to this day, I do not like going to uh, an all-you-can-eat restaurant because once you pay your fee, you feel like I have to eat everything and mass quantities to get my money's worth. I prefer not to do that because you say I feel sick if I do that, right? So we're not happy with our life, our body, how things are going. We're suffering from depression, perfectionism, and so we go to extremes. Now, this can manifest in different ways, and many people think that eating disorders are tied to obsessive-compulsive disorder, right? This need for control, either total lack of control or total control. Be careful when you're talking to young people. Sometimes innocent comments, as I mentioned before with Karen Carpenter, sometimes those can be made quite innocently to children and teens and adults, and it just sets them off. And that's not the intention. I'm going to tell you you're getting a little chubby, and I know that's going to lead into an eating disorder. No, no. But it could. Maybe we should be focused on other things, like maybe academics, or other things are going, as opposed to the size of an individual. So day one, females are always commented on to their shapeliness, their beauty, less emphasis on their accomplishments, their brains. Not everybody does that, but certainly in society, that's what we look for. Do you have the look? Are you the it girl? Fortunately, things have changed a little bit. For example, if we take Hollywood, we have some full-figured women who are very successful. 
we have some full-figured men who are very successful. But still, in a lot of movies, they're always seen as the comedic sidekick, not always the leading person. Why? Because the leading person has to have the look. They have that look. Usually a very thin person. Then they could be the star. <coughs> Eating disorders like anorexia nervosa used to be seen as just uh, something that affected uh, Caucasian females. And we've seen that that's starting to change. And of course, with the spread of social media, now there is expectations for all different styles and shapes, and body sizes. And again, it's a mixed bag. There are some people who are very successful and have kind of broken the barrier and says, love your body, no matter what it looks like. You know, Oprah Winfrey struggled for years, being so successful, struggled for years to lose weight until she finally came to the realization, this is my size. I need to eat healthy. I need to exercise, but I don't need to transform myself into somebody I'm not. I think that was a positive message. She just had to go through a lot to get there. Now, size can vary depending on culture. You know, we've struggled with this throughout the centuries, because if you look in a museum and look at very old paintings, right, you'll see that the portraits exhibited of women in the past were usually very large frame women, very shapely looking women, because that meant that you were healthy. That meant that you were disease free. If they showed a very um, thin individual, then uh, most likely you didn't have enough to eat, you were poor, and you probably had some kind of disease. Right? Now we've kind of gone and got back to the opposite. And I showed you that image earlier from South Coast Plaza. Now we're kind of promoting those sickly looking people from the Middle Ages. So it starts when we're kids. And here's some tips to get kids to eat healthy. Because let's face it, you know, a lot of kids, they're bombarded by the same media that we are. They see the beautiful colors of the cereal boxes like Captain Crunch versus the kind of dull looking, more expensive, healthy cereals. As soon as you tell a kid that something's good for them, right away they get suspicious and think it's not going to taste good. But some of these tips I think are valuable because what they do is they make preparation, selection of foods healthy. Have you ever been, how many of you have been to a farmer's market at some point in your life? Oh my goodness, you go to a farmer's market and you buy some of those fresh vegetables and you prepare them right away. It's like, oh my God, a carrot tastes that good? Really? Is that how broccoli is supposed to taste? Why? It was, uh, it was picked this morning, it was picked yesterday, and here I am buying it and preparing it now, versus it's been sitting in some freezer... Um, railroad car and then in a freezer at the store for who knows how long. Now, my father, um, when he retired from working in the factories, he had a ice cream truck. And he'd come around and sell ice cream to the kids. One time he came when I was working at a substance abuse agency. I was doing prevention work with kids and all the kids got free ice cream and they, they absolutely love me, right? But it'd be cool if we saw ice cream trucks that did this, drove around and promoted vegetables. <laughs> Although somebody pointed that he's destroying the value of the vegetables by pouring all this um, high fat content uh, substance on it. But yeah, we can get kids to turn around. Food can be fun. Food can be nutritious. And we should love our bodies because it's the one we have. See you next time.